tonight on the final play. Produce the new head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans, Alvin Gentry. The Alvin Gentry era is underway in New Orleans. Find out how he will maximize the Pelicans' potential and get the latest on Drew Holiday's injury saga. Plus, all quiet on the Junior Gallette front for the first time in a long time. But is a roster move looming? We'll debate that in the biggest storylines to come out of the Saints offseason. Plus, there's so many things that are out of my control. A tough visit to the Shrine on Airline for former LSU ace Anthony Renato. And an impending stay in the Big Easy for another former Tiger. We're checking in on the Zephyrs. And soccer fever is in the U.S. again. Fox 8 Sports. This is the final play with John Pazan. Brought to you by your Southern Quality Four dealers and Oceana Grill. Welcome into our final Sunday fun day of June. This is the final play. Tonight, we talk Junior Gallette and the Saints, but we begin with a new era for professional basketball here in New Orleans that officially got underway this week, the Alvin Gentry era. And the Pelicans' new head coach wants to marry some new principles with the winning foundation already in place. Chad Savity reports. It's a real important day for us as we introduce the new head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans, Alvin Gentry. A new era of Pelicans basketball has tipped off, and Alvin Gentry is convinced he's joined a championship contender. Why not us? I mean, why, why can't we do that if everybody's on the same page and, and, uh, and, and we compete every night? You know, magical things can happen to your team. The Pels will turn up the intensity on offense next season using Gentry's up-tempo philosophy to increase possessions and scoring opportunities. Gentry helped the Golden State Warriors lead the NBA in both points per game and pace of play last season en route to winning the World Championship. He believes his system will showcase the Pelican skill sets, especially the face of the franchise, Anthony Davis. I think this team has... Uh... Uh, a, a lot of potential to do a lot of great things. Uh, I think one of the things that I think you'll see us do is that we're going to play a lot faster and give him an opportunity to be in the open court. Uh, I think he, you know, he's got guard skills, so I think you'll see that happen. But the team's biggest area of need, according to Gentry, lies on the defensive end, where New Orleans fell to the bottom third of the league in efficiency despite AD finishing fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Gentry will build his defense around his superstar. A tremendous shot blocker. Um, I think he's going to get much better uh, just being an overall solid defender. Uh, it's just one of those things that as a young player, it takes you a little time to do. But he's going to be a tremendous player. He's going to be a Hall of Fame player. I have no doubt about that. And he's going to play in this league. Uh, if he's injury free, he's going to play in this league a lot, a lot of years. The Pelicans parted ways with Monty Williams because the front office wanted someone to take their organization to new levels of success. Both executive vice president Mickey Loomis and general manager Dell Demps spoke glowingly about Alvin Gentry. We all absolutely believe is the perfect, perfect guy to be the head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans. We want a coach that could adapt to the consistently changing NBA game. We believe Alvin Gentry will provide, provide the Pelicans with the best opportunity to achieve sustained success. However, Gentry has only led two teams to the playoffs in 12 seasons as a head coach. He says his limited postseason resume is not an indicator of his future in New Orleans. I think if you go back and look, uh, every place that I went to, I think I left it better than when I got there. And to me, that's the, the, the situation uh, that you have to try to look at. This is a, a what have you done for me lately uh, uh, league and, and, and job situation. So you know that going in, uh, instant gratification is is what everyone looks for, and sometimes you can get there and sometimes you can't. But uh, I think I'm a good basketball coach. I think I'll, uh, I think this is a really great situation to be in, and I think we'll be successful. Currently, only six players are under contract in Anthony Davis, Eric Gordon, Tyreek Evans, Drew Holiday, Ryan Anderson, and Quincy Pondexter, meaning Gentry and the Pels have some major holes to fill with free agency rapidly approaching. Well, we got the core of our team, and, and I think that's the most important thing. And then, uh, obviously, Dell and I, along with Mickey, uh, will sit down and we'll 
try to figure out what's the best way to complete our roster, and that's what we'll do. And then we'll line up in October and throw the ball up and go to training camp and, and try to get to the point where this team is going to be a team that's going to be fun to watch but very successful. With new faces likely coming to the roster, Gentry will have to build chemistry among and with his players. Fresh off winning that NBA championship, he feels there won't be any problems getting everyone on the same page. It gives you a, a little bit of credibility with the players uh, because at the end of the day, you know, you've gone through that journey, you know what it takes to get there. I think every player respects that, and I think every player in the league, ultimately, that's, that's their goal, is to, to, to have that ring to put on their finger. Next season, the Pelicans will aim for the franchise's first back-to-back -back playoff appearances since 2008 and 2009. Reporting for the final play, I'm Chad Sabaty. Drew Holiday's ability has never been an issue. It's his availability that has. And it turns out the Pelicans should have been given more information on his health status when they traded for him on draft day two years ago. And the NBA agreed. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, the 76ers were ordered to pay the Pelicans $3 million for not fully disclosing his injury history when the trade was made. The NBA, according to the report, says the 76ers knew about Holiday's stress fracture in his leg but did not disclose it. Holiday has played in 74 out of 164 games in two seasons. For more on the Pelicans and new head coach Alvin Gentry, let's check in with Garland Gillen. I'm now joined by Pelicans beat writer John Reed of NOLA.com and the Tons Picayune. All right, this is Alvin Gentry's fifth head coaching job. Monty Williams got him the first round this year, got him the first round against the Lakers. Can they go any further with Alvin Gentry running the controls? Well, yeah, I, I, I believe so. I believe that's what they hired him to come in for, to take this pr pr franchise to another level. You're talking about an offensive-minded coach who's going to push that tempo. You, they go, he's going to take advantage of more scoring. I think they have to emphasize improving the defensive side of that. But I think from an offensive standpoint, I think you're going to see a little similarities of the way Golden State ran that offense. They're going to do a lot of ball, ball movement, spacing, and getting guys, you know, just not just rely on Anthony Davis' shot. I mean, Davis is a great player, but there were some situations this past season where he was, you know, it was under duress a little bit that he had to take tough shots. And this offense with the ball movement, you're looking more of him getting in transition in that open court where he can outrun that, that post player to get the more of the layups and the easier type shots. And I think that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot higher scoring team more possessions and uh, I think that's what he brings to the table and he's proven that he's been able to do that with um, Golden State, the Los Angeles Clippers and Phoenix so I think that's what we're going to see here this upcoming season. Now Alvin Gentry talked about a parade down Canal Street. <laughs> I know Pelicans fans got really excited. Are we talking next year? Are we talking five years? What, what kind of with this roster could he could he pull it that quickly with the Pelicans there that we're talking about 2016 a parade or well, is it too early? I think that's a little early, but I'll say this about that talk. I mean, when you're talking about someone coming in here who experienced a championship, that's a different type of talk than what we've been used to. Right, I mean, right. We've been used to just trying to get in, you know. I think he's coming in and really changing the culture of this franchise, and that's what you do. You aim high, you talk about it, you, you involve your players with it, you keep having them to believe, you talk that to your fan base, and maybe two years away, maybe, maybe you know, I mean, even that rabbit's foot got to be there, but maybe two years away, but it's good to hear that. I mean, it's good to, to, to hear a coach reaching for the stars, so to speak, to get the fan base excited and just not just be, okay, we, we fighting just to get in as an eighth seed. Just try to be at that elevation level because that's the way you have to think in the, in the Western Conference. You got to think big, you got to play big, but you have to have your guys believing that they can get it done. And I think that's what he brings to the table. All right, July 1st is when free agency starts. Anthony Davis can get a max contract, five years, 140 million. Will it get done at the beginning of a free agency? 
Well, I, I think what he's going to weigh, what is the best situation for him. I think he's got to look long term, you know, not just, I mean, this is a, 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 a deep commitment for a guy like Anthony Davis. When you see what the future is, what they're going to bring in here to, to surround him with talent. I think that he's going to weigh that situation. And it wouldn't be bad even if he was to accept a three year deal, as long as he signs. I mean, I think that he's probably weighing the situation of five year to three year, but uh, any of those situations to get him locked up three years or five years is a good situation for this franchise. But um, I think this um, the Pelicans going to push for that five year, and I think they can get it done. I don't think it's going to be something quick, but I think they're going to have a solution to that by October the 31st. Alvin Gentry talked about uh, AD being the best player in the NBA next to LeBron. Do you see in the coming years, though, that AD will be the number one player in the NBA? Because LeBron took some beat, beat, got beat up there in the uh, NBA Finals there. Is this the, the future as Anthony Davis in the NBA? i tell you what, uh, you look at his elevation over the three years that he's been in the league, the different shots that he, ha that, that he has in, in, his, in his shooting range right now and what he didn't have as a rookie. I think that's the elevation, the motivation, and all the different things about him. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be a guy within the next three years that's going to be at the top of the league in, in, in talent. And, and, and you just look at all the different things that he – provides in a game to take the, I mean just to take over a game it's not just scoring I mean his defensive play his rebounding his it, it, you, you bring he brings everything to the table and I think he's just that transcendent player that that we haven't really seen exactly what his ceiling is he may not have a ceiling so I think that yes I think within three years it's just scary to think how young he is and just how good he's gotten since he was the number one pick in 2012. And uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree that I, I think he, when it comes down, when his career is finished, I predict that there's not going to be anybody that played this game like he has that will. So I, I think he's going to be exceptional. Uh, I mean, he's a Hall of Fame caliber player, and that's what he's going to be. With this wide open offense with Alvin Gentry, is there a spot for Omer Sheik on this new roster with, with Alvin Gentry wide open style? Well, I'll say this. I, I think that this, uh, the Pelicans are going to really make a push to re-sign him. They don't want to have a situation that he was a one-year rental. I, I think that he has to elevate his game a little bit more. I, I, I didn't think he played well at all in that playoff series against Golden State. I mean, when you look at what he did, he had um, eight combined points in four games and no blocks. And I think if you're in the situation with with uh, Omir and Robin Lopez, and they're both asking prices about the same, I would pick Robin Lopez because I think he could bring a little bit more offensively. And he's played in Alvin Gentry's system before with Phoenix, and I think that um, he would be a little bit better fit um, with this situation than Omir. But I understand when you bring a guy, you, 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 they gave up a lot to get him, and the draft pick, and... And um, you don't want to really have this presence of being just a, you bring in a guy, he's gone. So I think they're going to do everything in their, in their power to bring him back. Well, that's John Reed at TomSpeakingAndNola.com. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Back to you, Sean. Still to come, Junior Gallet has had a terrible offseason, but going to be his last with the Saints. A debate on that and other topics with training camp now just one month away coming up. Watching the final play. Welcome back into the show and welcome to the dead period for the Saints. They were off until late July for training camp at the Greenbrier in West Virginia. There's just one pesky issue that remains. Junior Gallette. On behalf of Tom and uh, Gail Benson, uh, I want to be the first one to welcome Alvin Yu. Amidst all the excitement of welcoming a new head coach to the Pelicans organization this week, Mickey Loomis was reminded of the one lingering issue still facing his other job as Saints general manager, Junior Gallet. I'd rather not comment on that right now. You know, the league's going through a process, and, and um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Disappointing, though? Well, again, you know, I, I think there's still work to be done in terms of, of you know, the information that's out there, so I'd rather not comment on it until uh, 
the league gets through their process. That process includes a meeting with the league this week, discusses January domestic violence arrest where the charges were eventually dropped. When he spoke to the media last week, he said he felt confident in his case, but that was before this came to light. A video of a person who closely resembles Galette in a beach brawl, striking a woman three times with a belt. His lawyer claimed it wasn't him. Social media photos would suggest otherwise. All of this will certainly be addressed in his meeting with the NFL, where a multi-game suspension is a very real possibility. At that point, the Saints will be faced with a decision on Galette's future with the organization, which can best be described as tenuous right now. We now welcome in Catherine Terrell, Saints beat reporter of NOLA.com and the Times Pick Union. And Catherine, let me first just get your take on this whole Galette situation. What do the Saints do? Well, it's a never ending situation, that's <laughs> what I like to call it. Um, you know, I think that he has a very high chance of being suspended now. People argue that this video that came out, um, him on the beach uh, hitting a woman with a belt, among other things, is from two years ago, so it doesn't matter. Well, I think it'll be factored into his other troubles when he meets with the league at the end of the month. So probably what's going to happen is if he does get suspended, the Saints probably won't fight it. They would probably just put him on the exempt list and he would be done for the season. Um, I think at this point it might be best. They might just want to cut their ties with him altogether. I mean, it's just never ending. I was going to ask you, do, do, do you think he's played his last down for the Saints? Uh, it looks more likely than not. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. This thing is so fluid, but, yeah. you know, there's the injury, um, there's the arrest, the lawsuit, the, <laughs> the video. I mean, how the other video, how yeah. many things do I have to list? You know, I just don't know that the Saints want him there anymore or that the NFL is not going to come down hard on him. All right, let's shift gears to on-the-field stuff. The entire offseason, it is now complete. We're in that dead period now, the break. Um, but with the offseason now over, uh, what to you is the biggest position battle? Uh, probably the secondary. Okay. Um, well, it, the, at the nickel spot, you mm -hmm. know, of course, Browner and Lewis have that first spot locked up. But I think there's a lot of guys that could compete at the nickel. Um, maybe Dalvin Bro. Mm -hmm. You know, when he came in, he was that feel-good story. Everyone wanted him to do well, but he really is playing mm -hmm. well, and he's drawn a lot of eyes. And of course, wide receiver. Um, mm -hmm. uh, head, or outside of um, Colston um, and Cooks. You know, you have a lot of guys competing, so what do you think? Yeah, yeah either one. I, I actually like both of those. The wide receiver yeah. is completely unknown at this point behind uh, Colston and Cook, so that could really be uh, uh, an interesting battle to watch. It's hard to get a gauge because they don't have pads on, but from what you were able to eyeball, what was their biggest improvement that you saw? I think it goes back to the secondary. Mm -hmm. I think that addition of Browner is going to help in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. First of all, he's a leader, and they really needed that. He's a vocal guy, and they admitted they missed the vocal guy. Now, he's going to get those guys in line. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the guys kind of follow what he does. Uh, Keenan Lewis is very close to him, so he's going to help there. And again, uh, the offensive line, that's another one. I think that that's much improved this year. But we, we can't tell yeah. yet, but I think it's going to be improved. Brandon Brown is a guy I would not mess with. What uh, newcomer? You mentioned Brandon Brown. Oh, maybe it's him, maybe it's someone else. What newcomer do you think will have the biggest impact? Uh, Stephon Anthony. Okay. Um, I think he's going to be a starter right from day one. And the reason I say that is because every single practice, his, his name seemed to come up. Mm -hmm. He was batting down passes, or he was just always doing something. And he was actually, I saw him kind of huddling up the guys and um, I guess maybe making calls or telling them what to do. And for a rookie that's, what, two months in, maybe mm -hmm. a month in, that's that's pretty big. So I think he has natural leadership ability. And I think Kakaha is going to be another guy that could make an impact. I, I, I like both of those guys. And I also, I just think C.J. Spiller is going to have a huge year this year. Okay. Agreed. You, you, you saw the whole offseason, the moves. You've watched a little bit of the on-the-field work. It is early. But can you definitively say that this Saints team will be better this year than where they were last year? Uh, no, I don't think you can say that yet. Uh -huh. I think it's just too early because at this point last year, everyone thought the Saints were uh -huh. going to go to the Super Bowl. So every time anyone asks me, uh, what are the Saints going to do this year? I just stick to 8-8 eight and eight for now. <laughs> uh, not hedging either way, but... Um, I think you're just going to have to figure out how they deal with all these players being gone. Mm -hmm. How do they deal with Jimmy Graham being gone and Curtis Lofton? 
um, when they lost all those leaders the year before, it really affected them. So does it affect them this year? Can they deal without their biggest playmaker? So I just, I don't know, you know, I'll, I'll learn more in training camp, I guess, and I wish I had a better answer, but I just really don't know. I, you know, I, I, I had that feeling. I could just as easily see this team going six and 10, it, it, as easily as 10 and six. It's yeah. just that kind of, you're probably pretty smart by staying <laughs> eight and eight right now. It's pretty good to stay right, right in down the middle. Catherine Terrell, thank you so much. The past week saw a member of LSU's 2009 championship team play against the Zephyrs. As he's returned to the Big Easy, it will be with another member of the Tigers title team playing shortstop. We've got baseball talk on deck. You're watching the final play. The last time LSU won a College World Series, Anthony Renato was their ace on the mound. Since that time, Renato has bounced around the minors, got up to the majors, only to come back down this year. And he even made a stop in New Orleans this week as a member of the Round Rock Express. Renato started out that game on fire, striking out two Zephyr batters in the first inning. But he would get rocked, though, in the third with back-to-back -back home runs. Z's went on to win while Renato spoke about his career path thus far. Just being focused on consistency. There, like, there's so many things that are out of my control as far as what, what level I'm playing at, and you know, even the results like today. I, I thought I made some good pitches, in the, and sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the other guys in the other dugout, and uh, you know, things like that are going to happen. But uh, as far as for this year, just being able to work on my delivery, you know, repeat my mechanics, and um, you know, mix my pitches effectively has, has been uh, been the key so far for me. One of Renato's former teammates, Austin Nola, will join the Zephyrs this week. He actually joined the team today in Des Moines, Iowa. He was with Class 2A Jacksonville and batted 211 with one home run and 26 RBI. Well, coming up, the Women's World Cup is heating up. In the I think the mentality is great. I think it's the best it's been this entire tournament. I think that last night was um, huge for us in terms of comp. The semifinal starts Tuesday on Fox 8 at 5 p.m. Next weekend, the third place game will be Saturday at 2. The championship game is Sunday at 5 p.m. Well, that would do it for us here tonight. Remember to tune in to Fox 8 News at 10 tomorrow as we begin our top 20 Saints countdown. For all of us here at Fox 8 Sports, I'm Sean Fazan, and that's your final play. The final play was brought to you by Southern Quality Ford Dealers and Oceana Grill. Fox 8 is proudly locally owned.